All right, welcome back to another episode of Paul's Collectibles. If you're a returning viewer, thanks for coming back. Thanks for joining me again, I appreciate it. And if you're a new viewer, welcome to the channel. I hope you like what you see. And in any case, if you have any questions or comments, please make sure that you leave those comments below and I'm happy to answer any questions or if you have any concerns or you have any insight into any of these figures as I go through them, that would be incredibly helpful and I greatly appreciate it. Today, we are gonna be going through what I like to refer to as the Attack of the Clones wave of my three and three quarter inch Star Wars action figures. Now, if you look these up online, I believe the wave is just technically called Star Wars. But because Star Wars is kind of a simple and direct name, I think this uh, series actually became known as Star Wars Saga. But the problem with that is some of the other series of figures that came out, series is, is that a word? Either way. Anyway, <laughs> some of the other lines of figures that came out had the title Saga in them. And so it caused a little bit of confusion according to the website that I look at, which as an aside is rebelscum.com. I got to give a quick shout out to them. They are the ones that helped me with the chronological order about when these figures came out, what the names of the sagas are and things like that. So check them out. They had a great photo archive. This wave came out around the same time as the movie Attack of the Clones about 2002 and consequently most of the figures revolve around that movie and with that let's get into taking a closer look at each one of these figures all right here's a quick overview there are 26 of these figures the top row has three deep and then the second row here is a single row for you let's take a quick overview look and then at the very bottom here excuse me there are four more figures all right, let's take a really close look at each of these. Okay, they always say that the best place to start is at the beginning, so we will start with this Clone Trooper sneak preview figure. This was one of the four figures that came out before the movie Attack of the Clones came out, so you can get an idea of what the characters in there, or at least some of them, would look like. He's part of the wave, but as you'll quickly notice, he is a different color than the rest of them. On the back, it shows you the four sneak preview figures. I was going to call them pre-order, but <laughs> the four sneak preview figures, one of which is this R3-T7. I don't remember him from Attack of the Clones, but I'm sure he was pretty important. All right, we'll move right along. I'll be honest with you with this next character. I don't know why I have it. This is Lama Sue with a clone youth. Lama Sue was one of the Kamino and cloners. And for some strange reason, I picked this up, even though I normally only get Sith, Jedi, and clone troopers. But maybe I picked him up because he's technically a clone trooper. Yeah, that's the excuse I'll go with. And on the back there, you can see Lama Sue escorting the child around Kamino. Nothing creepy about that at all, right? <laughs> all right, moving right along. This is the next one. This is what they're just referring to as clone trooper. Interesting thing about this, as you can see, however, is that he actually has red markings, which I believe denotes him as a clone captain, but they just call him clone trooper on here. And this one came with the accessories with the firing tripod and everything like that. And on the back, that's what he looks like. Show you how to use all that cool stuff. All right. So that's an interesting thing we found. They mislabeled him, I guess. Next up, you know why I have this figure. Worst kept secret in the whole movie series. Although in this movie, Attack of the Clones, he was simply the Supreme Chancellor. We know that he eventually becomes the head Sith and gets in a lightsaber duel. So I went ahead and picked him up as part of my Sith collection. On the back, shows you some cool stuff. Qui-Gon Jinn's uh, got a picture on the back of this, even though he is dead by the time of this movie, and Dejas Pure, which, as I understand it, is a bounty hunter from the Expanded Universe. Moving right along, we have Darth Vader. Now, <laughs> when I saw this, you're probably thinking the same thing. There was no Darth Vader in Attack of the Clones yet. Now, at least of which not in this black armor, but they decided to put Empire Strikes Back down here and sell you another action figure. The unfortunate thing about this one is that it has a price tag up top and on the back, give you an idea of what looks like his slashing motion from Empire Strikes Back. All right, we will hit up Shaq T next. She's one of the Jedi Council. She's got a blue lightsaber that pops off from its handle so she can hold on to it while it's not lit as well. We'll take a look at the back there. Apparently all of them have some sort of slashing motion. All right, we'll move on. This is Darth Tyrannus. Now, 
after Darth Maul meets an unceremonious end in Phantom Menace, apparently Lord Sidious takes a new apprentice and names him Darth Tyrannus. He's got lightning coming out of his fingers that you can add on, and he's got that cool lightsaber hilt on the back. Shows you how to put him together. Shows you how to do his slicing action. All right. And of course, this is basically the same figure, just a little bit of a difference. I find it interesting that it comes with a green lightsaber. Now, you want to explain to me why he has a green lightsaber in there? I'd love to know that because he was carrying that red one. Maybe that's from back when he was a Jedi. And there is a hologram of the Emperor. We'll flip that over and they just show you using his red lightsaber on the back. So if you can figure out the green lightsaber thing, you're better than me. Next up we have Eeth Koth. Now, here we go again. If you look down at the bottom, that says Phantom Menace, although they added him to this wave, but he was one of the Jedi that was at the Battle of Geonosis, and I don't think he survived. I remember seeing him towards the end. And of course, at the bottom you can see Imperial Officer and Rebel Trooper and Tebow, all from different movies. So <laughs> they threw in a bunch of other characters in this wave that weren't necessarily from Attack of the Clones. Moving right along, we're going to throw a Yoda on there. This version of Yoda comes with what looks like some sort of stuff he can crawl onto or whatever, but it's got a small little lightsaber, it's got a walking stick, it's got some lightning in there that apparently he can catch. A little stand. Man, this one's hooked up. And if you look on the back, it shows you all the cool stuff you can do with that. We'll set that still for just a second. And it's got that clone captain that we talked about earlier and Zam Wessel, who I did not pick up because I'm not into that. All right. Let's moving on here. Here we have Anakin Skywalker, as we all know, soon to be Darth Vader. And in this one, that's what he was wearing when he and Padme slipped off to Naboo, where all kinds of things happened that weren't supposed to. But he's got his little travel chest. He's got a pistol. That's interesting. I never saw him use a pistol in the whole movie series, but whatever. But I don't see... Oh, there it is. He's got a lightsaber back there. You can just see it. And of course, he's dressed as a refugee. And on the back, they show you how to use all this cool stuff that he comes with. And then, more to the point, we have Anakin Skywalker. But this time, it's called the Secret Ceremony. So as you can see, I believe the Secret Ceremony is supposed to be when he marries Padme. And he's already got the metal hand, so he's already had his hand cut off by Dooku at this point. And he's not a full Jedi yet, because he's still got that little ponytail with a blue lightsaber. Super posable! All right, and that's what it looks like on the back real fast. Okay, moving right along, we're gonna get into Ashla and Jempa. Now, as I understand it, these are two of the Jedi younglings that were from Attack of the Clones that were being trained. One of those look like she's the same race as Shaq T. Can't quite tell what that other one is. And on the back, shows you that they're quite a little team. Got the little helmets that they come with and train in, and you saw that in the movie. And then this one is interesting because this one has Chien, which is obviously a Jedi youngling, but this one has Yoda sitting up there next to him so that uh, you can enact your own training scenarios. <laughs> All right, look at that. Cool. Now we're going to move into Plo Koon. This says arena battle, so he must have survived the arena battle. And uh, I know that... He must have survived because you are well aware that in Revenge of the Sith, he eats it in a starfighter. <laughs> it's got his little blue blaster thing going on there, whatever that is. And on the back, it shows you how to use him in a cool and fun, exciting way. Let's get on to Barris Ophi. She's one of the Jedi that was in Attack of the Clones. And at the bottom, it says Luminara Unduli's Padawan. And I believe I have her. But... She's got a green lightsaber and a little blaster thing. A little bit of dirt that she can stand on to reenact the scene. And my favorite is, look at her. She's screaming mad. Ah! <laughs> All right. And then on the back, that shows you how you're supposed to use her in a fun and exciting action way. Next up, we have what I think is hilarious. They just called this guy Nikto. Nikto Jedi Knight. But we all know that Nikto is actually his race, not his name. So I think this guy ends up getting a name or someone from his same race gets a name later, like Fiel Search or Sickel Search or something like that. 
got a blue lightsaber that you stick in his hand. And then we'll flip that over. Once again, it shows you how to use him. Here we go. There's Ailey Sakura. Uh, always an interesting character if you ask me. She has what I call video game itis. What she's wearing has no basis in reality or safety. She's just got a halter top on. But that's how female characters are treated a lot of times in these movies and in these video games. So once again, that's from the arena battle because it's got the little bit of dirt and sand underneath there. And then apparently she can high kick with the best of them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, we're getting into it now. Here we go. Here's Anakin Skywalker again. Apparently I have three Anakin Skywalkers. One as a Jedi. One as or a Jedi Padawan, one as the refugee, and then this one where apparently he is using the two lightsabers in the hangar duel. You can take a look at that with secret battle feature. Oh boy. We'll flip it over and we'll show you the secret battle feature, I'm assuming. You turn the wheel on his back and his left wrist rotate for lightsaber battle action. Alrighty. Here we go. <laughs> this is another one of my favorites. I love this one. And the next one that comes after. This is Attack of the Clones Mace Windu, obviously, during the Geonosan Rescue. As you can see at this point, Jango Fett's already burned his cloak, so he had to dump it. But look at that intense face. That's Samuel L. Jackson right there. That's <laughs> just some major just intense right there, buddy. People are going down. And again, that shows you how to use him. And I love <laughs> they just couldn't help it. They even had to give you a close-up. That's great. And then, of course. Once again, there's Samuel L. Jackson. This time the purple lightsaber is removable and he still has his cloak on. And that face, man, look at how intense he is. He's just angry. Something's gotta happen. Arena confrontation. And then he's got that little dial in his back so you can use him to fight with. And then we'll check out the back and I'll show you how to use it. Okay, winding down here. Here we have Stacey Tin, and if you'll recall, he dies in a battle with Emperor Palpatine <laughs> pretty quickly, kind of disappointing, but he's got some sort of explosion with him on the back. Shows you how he can fight with all his friends, try to get some things done for the end of the war. All right, we talked about her earlier. There's Luminera Unduli. She is apparently the master of Bera Sophie. They appear to be of the same race, or at least they have the same skin tone and same facial tattoos. Flip her over. I think I remember seeing her. No, never mind. That was someone else. Okay. All right. Last three here. Here we have finally Obi-Wan Kenobi. I didn't think I had an Obi-Wan Kenobi. But this has that droid that he's holding on to that Sam Wessel tried to assassinate Padme Amidala with. He's got his blue lightsaber. And of course, you can reenact the wonderful scene of him being dragged through the skies of Coruscant on that Jedi. Or excuse me, on that uh, droid Jedi. <laughs> and that's what the back of that one looks like. And next up, we have Kit Fisto. He was one of the ones that ate it quickly in the battle with Lord Palpatine as well. And they went to arrest him. He just has his uh, lightsaber. Pretty boring, nothing else with him. And then, let's move that up a little bit. Shows you uh, some of the things he can do on the back. And then finally, we have everyone's favorite cone head, <laughs> Dan Aykroyd. No, I'm just kidding, it's not Dan, it's Coyote Mundi. And we know how he ate it. His galactic marines blew him away on that snowy planet. But in this movie, he survives. He sits on the uh, Jedi Council. Once again, they're getting a little boring with him here. He just has a lightsaber with some stuff blasting off of it. And on the back, shows you what he looks like, what he can do. And with that, that is my Attack of the Clones series from about 2002 single figures. And I will hope to see you on the next episode. All right, take care.